Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about nucleophilic aromatic substitution by the elimination addition mechanism. This is the type of mechanism that occurs on unactivated arenes. So those that have uh, no electron withdrawing group on them. And as an example, let's talk about the conversion of chlorobenzene into aniline using sodium amide as a base. And this, this reaction is going to require a fair amount of heat. So even though it's done in, say, liquid ammonia, it's done in a pressure cooker, it gets hot. Right? This reaction is, it requires some heat. It's, it's pretty, pretty horrible. You might want to propose a mechanism like the limit, like the addition elimination or star mechanism, uh, except that mechanism is inconsistent with the following observation, which is if I put another substituent on the ring, I get the product that I expect with the leaving with the nucleophile replacing the leaving group, but I also get a different isomer. with the nucleophile at a different spot. And so this is a little bit confusing. And let's talk about how this happens. Since I've chosen the way I have that oriented, I want my, swap my bonds around. So this mechanism is considered to go through a fairly different pathway. Um, instead of going addition elimination, it's the reverse elimination addition. So we actually have proton transfer and, and the, the mechanism is believed to be uh, kind of this E1-ish, well, Again, it's, it's sort of backwards from any of the, the ones we've studied, where you have proton transfer first to make uh, an anion. The closest, analogo and closest uh, uh, analogous kind of mechanism is the E1CB mechanism. It's available to conjugated, uh, or available to, to leaving groups adjacent to carbonyl groups. But you form the anion and then the loss of leaving group happens. And now I'm going to draw benzene. I want double bond, double bond. Pardon me while I clean up where my bonds are. The, the proposed intermediate in this kind of reaction is this benzene with a triple bond in it that uh, folks have named benzene. Uh, and so this mechanism is also called the benzene mechanism because it involves the, uh, you know, invoking this benzene structure. And you might be nervous at this benzene structure, and I am too, and there's a lot of uh, research out there that suggests that benzene is not actually... Uh, ooh, not actually a, a thing itself. There we go. I just discovered a fast way to do this. Uh, but instead is, is perhaps equivalent to a di-radical or whatever, uh, just given the sort of difficulty of having two pi bonds and one of them hanging out partially inside the ring. Uh, <clears throat> Benzene is really reactive if it exists. And there are a lot of uh, chemists that really did not believe this intermediate existed, but it does uh, explain the behavior of the reaction. You can get nucleophilic attack of the amide ion at one position, which would generate a carbanion, and it's actually gonna look a lot like this carbanion But 
And, and I deleted the carbanion, so let me go put it back. And then that carbanion would pick up uh, a proton from ammonia, which we generate through one of the proton transfer steps. And that generates the, the sort of first product, or the product where uh, the nucleophile is where we'd expect it to be. In fact, we could also have drawn because there's nothing, there's nothing sort of electronically guiding this nucleophile to either end of the, the ion and benzene, and we'd have made a different carbon ion. Now, with the nucleophile meta to the other group carbon ion here, and it's arrows, and after proton transfer, you would get the, the differently substituted, you get metamethyl aniline instead of paramethyl aniline. So, product and delete all this other stuff. So here, this mechanism explains what's going on. But as I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of chemists that really didn't believe that, that benzene existed. Uh, but a really interesting proof of concept was developed that if benzene was real, it should do some things that we expect alkynes to do, and it should do them in a way that is uh, unexpectedly good because it is not particularly unstable. And so, what some chemists have done over you know since is to is to verify the existence of benzene is to generate benzene in the presence of furan, and so furan looks like it's a diene but it's also an aromatic diene. So you might expect that as a diene, furan is not the best diene because it's aromatic. It's it reacting. Uh, if it was to do something else, it would not be aromatic anymore. But enzyme might be a pretty good dienophile. And it turns out that in fact, this is true that benzene reacted with furan produces uh, a deals older reaction. And I'm just gonna draw this from its top-down confirmation uh, here. And it does so really readily. And so this kind of reaction was, was really, helpful to uh, generate or to, to prove that benzene and benzene like things are real actually since I did I had the, the methyl group that would have put my methyl group back there are now other ways that folks out there will try to generate benzene and do things with benzene um, so I'm just gonna highlight one of them and it actually kind of leads into leads into to another topic. So here's, this is antranilic acid. Uh, if this is treated with sodium nitrite and hydrochloric acid and followed by base, this thing actually decomposes to form benzene and can be used as a source of benzene. And you get the, the amine is converted into nitrogen gas and the carboxylic acid is converted into carbon dioxide gas. That's pretty cool. All right. So just going to go back up here and, and, sh and 
highlight this mechanism one more time. When you don't have an electron withdrawing group, this mechanism is the only one that works. And so you're going to get nucleophilic attack both where you would expect it and at neighboring positions, which means you can get undesired isomers. Uh, this sort of nucleophilic aromatic substitution is thus less useful overall in synthesis unless you're doing it early on or it's like the only thing that you can possibly uh, think of. In the next video, I'm going to uh, go on and talk about the Sandmeyer reaction and other reactions involving diazobenzenes. Or, I'm sorry, azo, yeah, diazobenzenes. All right. Thank you for watching.